Hey guys, Brandon here. Market update time? No, it's insider's update time. So that's what we're going to do here. We've got some stuff going on today. We've got three pages of notes, so we're not going to nix some stuff. It's not going to be quite that long. But what I want to do is I really want to start bringing some more pointed, um, you know, deep content to, you know, everyone that we can reach. And We've, we've been doing this for a little while, but it's really just been for um, people that we, that we knew. You know, they were just subscribed to our newsletter or whatever it may be. And we really want to reach more people. I don't know if this will be something that we have out forever and we, we make it public forever. But it's, it's something I want to do for a little bit here and there and to try to reach more people and, and hopefully get some, some word out. I spend a lot of time, my team spends a lot of time every single month. Uh, digging up content, reading articles, newsletters, you know, subscribing to newsletters, um, you know, from from guys like this and guys like this that you know give us information that you just don't see on the TV every day. It's not in the media. It's not in the newspaper. It's not on most blogs on the internet. It's uh, these are guys that are are true, you know, economic historians and you know, currency and, and gold and silver and and real estate business. So. It's something, it's a passion of mine. The, the people in the Legacy Group, our team here, you, we have a team of people that, that love this kind of stuff as well. And you know, we, did, we did a video yesterday on you know, the people you surround yourself with. Um, I think it's really important to know the past and you know, guys like this, um, knowing the past, knowing the, what currency is and what, it, and what money is uh, and knowing the difference between those two things. The guys like this who, one of my, you know, he's my probably my all-time mentor just in the financial world, in, in real estate and in business world, um, knowing the difference between an asset and a liability. Um, you know, it's just, there's certain things where you're taught in school. And it's something that I, I spend countless, countless hours every single month studying these guys, you know, and, and guys like them. And it's something that I really want to give back to you. The insider's updates that we, we've been doing they just they weren't uh, up to par. They weren't they weren't good enough for me, and they they just need to be a lot better, a whole heck of a lot better. So um, this is kind of the start of that. This is you know obviously it's a crazy time right now, and you know there's a lot of stuff going on with the holidays and in family. But this is something that I, I put together. It's only only three pages of notes, so that's it. So in the future they might be even a little bit longer. Um, because there's just there's so much to go through, and I think that you know when you study the past, you can see the future. And you know, you, you, everyone's kind of heard that before, but it's so true, especially with the economy and money and things like that. So we have our, our market update that we do uh, once a month, and that's more of the micro level. And we want to be macro level, and, and with our insiders update. And like I said, this takes a ton of time to put together, and it's going to take even more time to put together in the future. So I don't know if it's going to be um, available to the public forever. You know, it could be for the next five years, but eventually it could be something where it's just subscribers, and we're doing something like that. So who knows? Um, but I'm excited to get you know feedback from from everyone I know to see what they think because it's it's just something for a long time I've thought about. Gosh, how can I get you know the information I have in front of more people? And really, I just didn't package it up enough and and put it together. And, and I talked to a lot of people about it. People that know me or know me well or whatever they know that I'm into this kind of thing. And it's uh, it's fun and it's fun to be in the real estate world because we're dealing with stuff like this all the time. It affects us. Things like the interest rate. You know, they just raised that obviously um, this month, a quarter point, and they did it a year ago, right? So it's in the, that was only two times in the last 10 years, in the last decade, they've done that. So why is that? You know, why did they do that? You know, you have guys like this who, you know, Jim Rickers, Richard Duncan, these guys are, you know, Jim Rickers was one of the first guys, actually he was the first guy, I'm sorry, to war game a financial meltdown in America and in the world with the Pentagon. So that's your, that's your guy right here. I've got one of his books right here, actually. His most recent one. That's a fun one. The Road to Ruin. So, and again, this isn't meant to, these videos aren't going to be meant to scare people. Knowledge is power, but, you know, action is, is really what, you know, what helps you, obviously. Um, but knowing still helps too, right? So, um, this guy, you know, right here, I think it says in the first page or two, it talks about him being the only person to ever war game that. And uh, war game a financial meltdown in the United States of America. So, 
it's um, it's something that's real. This has been going on. I mean, he even has in his book too. I was just going through it again earlier. 98, 08, 2018. Those are some of the big points. I, I'm guessing you can probably see the correlation and where that's going. Um, but uh, it's Jim Rickers is unbelievable. He's got you know a handful of different books. I'm going to put the books in some different stuff, and all these guys have you know like he has a newsletter. He has you know some books too. But may, these guys all have books for the most part, and um, they're awesome reads. You know, like Muhammad Al Aryan, unbelievable guy. He's an Egyptian businessman, um, but he has, you know, right here. I've got a whole page on him, basically. And I just heard him talk the other day, and he wrote the only game in town. It's all about the Federal Reserve, European Central Bank, uh, the Bank of Japan, the IMF, International Monetary Fund, and it's all the central banks of the world. And in really kind of going over Brexit and some different uh, things that have gone on in the world lately and how the central banks are the ones really controlling everything. They're the ones really controlling everything. Everything we do, they're the ones controlling that. You know, a lot of people think that um, the president of the United States, you know, Barack Obama or, you know, president-elect Donald Trump is the most powerful man in the world, but he's not. Uh, the central banks are. <laughs> so that's, uh, the central banks are the most powerful people in the world. And there's a quick fact, they are not private, you know, or entities are not owned by, um, I'm sorry, they are, they are, they, they aren't owned by, the, the U.S. Federal Reserve, for example, is actually, you know, have private stockholders, you know, they're, they're basically owned by the banks, and, you know, we're led to believe, and we were taught our whole lives that they were, you know, they're for us, they're the U.S., you know, Federal Reserve, and they're there to protect us, and, yeah, it's really, you know, it's a different game. It's a shell game, really. And, um, you know, again, this is not meant to scare people, but it's meant to enlighten and, and really help people see a different side of things. Because, I mean, I, for one, I think one of the big reasons that Donald Trump got elected this election is people are so sick of being lied to. Um, and, you know, you, you can say what you want about Donald Trump. You can say what you want about Hillary Clinton, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, but people are just sick of not having the truth. They're not sick. They're just sick of you know, the media putting the veil over them and, you know, just telling them whatever they want. Um, you know, there's a report out that, um, I can't remember who was saying it the other day, but there's a report out, and it's not a report, actually. I mean, it's, it's we have the, the evidence, we have the text messages. It was like Barclays and UBS and a couple of different banks, they're all colluding together and shorting the silver price. So I know he, Mike Maloney talked a lot about it. Um, he is an unbelievable. If anyone had followed my Snapchats recently in the last, I don't even know, probably it's probably like four or five months ago, I was talking about hidden secrets of money. This guy is unbelievable. If you want to learn about currency, the history of money, and the difference between those two things, um, this is your guy. He is unbelievable. Goldandsilver.com, goldsilver.com, nothing in between there. He is unbelievable. Go watch his videos. I mean, they had to have cost so much to put together. Some of the best animation and production I think I've seen really in a, in educational videos anywhere um, in any industry. So he, he's awesome to, to learn from and uh, just incredible videos. I had a lot of people come to, back to me and just say, wow, like just eye-opening to them. And it, it really is uh, captivating, the videos, honestly. And it's super easy. I mean, they make this stuff so hard. I mean, there's a couple of the episodes. There's like seven episodes and they're all like half an hour long. And there was one one of the videos I watched, I probably watched it like seven, eight, nine, maybe ten times, and I still don't get some of it. Um, that's it was just they were showing you how money flows from the Fed to the Treasury and to the government, and, and it's just it's it's it, they're showing you, and you still it's very it's so hard to comprehend because you just it's it's that, but you watch it a few times and you eventually get it. But it's um, they make it that way specifically to confuse people. And that way, you know, all the jargon they use, you don't understand what's going on. You just kind of brush it outside and say, oh, okay, whatever, that's, I don't get it, so who cares? Someone else will take care of it. That's what they want. You know, like that's the, that's the whole point. You know, they don't want it to be, they want you to be able to say, oh, and hey, this is, the employment rate was this, or the unemployment rate was this, and everyone just, you know, hey, whatever. What they don't tell you is that they took, you know, factors out of factoring in the unemployment rate, they took away half the stuff they used to calculate it with before. So when they say unemployment is 5%, well, if you really calculate it like we used to, say, 20 or 30 years ago, it'd be 12, 13, 14, 15%. So, and that leads me to another thing really quick is the Dow, which, you know, we have very overvalued things right now, which is the stock market, 
right? So we have the stock market, it's almost at 20,000, you know, record highs. And you, that, it can't, that can't last forever. And it's just what goes up must come down. It's as simple as that. I mean, we have economic dips and depressions or whatever you want to call them, recessions. We have them every seven to nine years, seven to 10 years maybe. And we're in year, what, eight, nine? So that's where a lot of these guys, like your Robert Kiyosaki, he said 2016 there was going to be a crash. And he said that because of the baby boomers. The first time the baby boomers started turning 70 and a half was this year. That's why he said it was gonna start collapsing this year. Um, Rickard said, he, he says eight, 2018. Harry Dent says sometime in, in the next four years, or, you know, before 2020. Um, so that's, and Bert Doman kind of says the same thing as well. But that's where, you know, just following people who know what's going on and not just following people like this, <laughs> who if, no, if someone doesn't know who that is, uh, ben Bernanke used to be the, fa the, cha the chairman of the Federal Reserve, and he he was uh, you know let's just call him he's an, he's an academic, and you know they the Federal Reserve they run off of a lot of algorithms and computer models and things like that, and they they tend to they they subscribe to the Keynesian you know economic model, and what they fail to kind of you know realize and take into account is human nature and real life unfortunately. Um, and, you know, it's just funny. I've got, a, I got something right here. He just, he said, Bernanke wrote a paper in the 90s, which I will not read Ben Bernanke. I've, some of the stuff actually from Mike Maloney, you know, he would read Ben Bernanke and he just says it's the most terrible thing to read in the world. So I just, I really don't even try Ben, with Ben Bernanke. Uh, but he, right here we have him <laughs> saying that in the 90s, he was saying how Japan, Japan's been in crisis really for the last 30 years. And, they're just, they've been struggling ever since then. And they, he just said how we, in the U.S. we would never have low growth or low interest rates like Japan. And that's exactly what we have now. So, and, and these kind of patterns just keep happening over and over and over again. And that's when you, you take a step back and you think, wow, what is going on? You know, what, what are we doing as, as a country, as a world, but really as a country, what are we doing? How are we going about things? And, you know, Muhammad al Arian talks about, you know, some of that stuff in here. It talks about Europe and some of the different crises going on there. Obviously, you have Italy and Greece and a number of different countries that are looking like they could, you know, do a Brexit, you know, and, and, and leave. And what would, that, what would happen if that did happen? You know, he thinks that it would hurt us more politically than it would economically. He thinks we'd still be fine. I, you know, you have people that differing, you know, opinions with that. Uh, but really, his big thing, again, he writes about, in his book, The Only Game in Town, he writes about the central banks. And he really talks a lot about the Fed is out of bullets. And I mean, if there's one thing that's common between all these guys, well, really everyone in black, it's that they talk about the Fed being out of bullets. And, you know, this guy used to run the Fed. He knows the Fed is out of bullets, but he thinks that he, they can manipulate things and print money and do different things that are going to, you know, increase their, their ammunition supply, if you will. And, and really, they are. They're out of bullets. I mean, they, you can only print so much money. We had quantitative easing, they called it, for, you know, what, QE4, 3 or 4, whatever we're on now or we're on. And uh, they have to, they're trying to raise interest rates a little bit. We didn't raise rates for 10 years. We raised them once last year. They said they were going to raise them forever. Then they finally raised them in the first time in 9 years, 10 years, a quarter point, which is nothing. And then they raised it again this year after they said they are going to raise it four times. They raised it once in December. Another quarter point, and, and honestly, I mean, I think, and I've seen a lot of people say that the one reason they are trying to raise interest rates is because they need somewhere to take them, which is down. They need somewhere to bring them when, they're, when other things, you know, kind of hit the fan. Um, they need somewhere to, to take those interest rates. So they're trying to give themselves some leeway to drop it. On that topic, we have negative interest rates, which are awesome. Obviously, some places in the world, if people have heard of, of that going on in different places, we have negative interest rates where, again, Muhammad al Arian talks about it a lot. I, got, I just heard him talk the other day about it. And he talks about just being very aware of what's going on, obviously. And like I said before, this isn't meant to, these videos aren't meant to, the insider updates aren't meant to scare people. They're not meant to, you know, do anything but try to educate and enlighten people. Because I think that it's, it's so important to be, educated as to what's going on and to what's going on in the world around us that 
It's uh, being agile, like he says, being agile, being resilient to the things that are going on around you in this crazy time. I mean, how many things happened just, just, just this week, you know, stabbing, shootings, you know, car bombs, things like that. You have to be prepared for anything. You've got to be prepared for, you know, economic crisis. You've got to be prepared for, um, you know, physical events going on in the world around you. And he, you know, Muhammad al Arian talks a lot about just being resilient and, you know, and being, just being aware of what you're doing. I mean, he talks about, he talks about negative interest rates and he's like, why would someone be saving as much money as possible and saving all their money and in, or by getting bonds and they have to pay to do that? I mean, think about that. There's places in the world that have negative interest rates. You're paying the bank to keep your money for you. So you put in a million dollars, and then at the end of the year, you pay them hundred grand. I mean, that doesn't make, doesn't make any sense to me. It just, you know, and that's and that's something that will it come here? I have no idea. I mean, really, no one has any idea. But it's a possibility. You know, that's instead of bailouts, there could be bail-ins. So negative interest rates. There could be like in Cyprus, we had people the, the government coming in just scooping, you know, people's bank accounts. You know, everyone above 100 grand or everyone above 250 grand in their bank account, just scooping the excess off the top, just taking all of it and saying, hey, sorry, you know. And so that's, those are things that, again, they're just to be aware of. Those things are, are, they are going on in the world around us. And we just have to be very careful with what we're doing and just be aware of that. Again, just like he says, he says like three times in the, in the talk. I mean, just be resilient, be agile, be aware of what's going on around you. It's just, it's so important. It's so, so important. Um, he talked about um, OPEC, which is, I thought was interesting too, a really quick note on, on OPEC, but oil below 45 hurts the OPEC countries, above 55 shale, uh, and, you know, they, that really starts coming into play. So there's like that sweet spot between 45 and 55. So, you know, we've kind of seen uh, gas prices up and down a little bit in the last year or two. Um, he did talk about the corporate tax. So he said, if, you know, if Trump, get, Trump does, you know, bring the corporate tax down, corporate tax rate, then, you know, it could help a lot with business. Um, there are conflicting views on that as well, though. I mean, people say that, well, if the money starts pouring back into America, then inflation could go up. So it's, it's an interesting dichotomy. And that's why I think these videos are so important. You know, I, I just spend so much time reading this stuff and, and going over it. Um, you know, because I, I really feel that it's, it's something that as a, Great. As a real estate agent on a micro level, that's awesome, you know, but as a business owner on the next level, you know, you've got to be aware of what's going on. And I think it's my duty to, you know, help people around me and I, to help my, my, um, the people I work with, help my family. I think I have to be aware of these things so that way I can get the word out and people can get the word out. You know, that's what these guys are all doing, you know, and, you know, I stumbled on this guy six years ago. Really, I mean, nine years when the crash happened, that's where I really took an interest in money and the currency, business, you know, all the, the four asset classes, you know, business, real estate, uh, commodities, and paper. And that's when I just really looked at stuff and I was like, wow. And I found this guy two or three years later. Um, yeah, I guess it was maybe 08, 09, the crash. And about two years, in 2011, I found this guy. And this guy changed my life. I mean, he, he completely changed my life. Um, the very first book I read um, of his, I found it in a grocery store for, of course, in a grocery store, yeah, like a whatever, a superstore. And it was like three bucks in the bargain bin. I knew who Donald Trump was. He wrote a book, Why We Want You to Be Rich, with Donald Trump. I knew who Donald Trump was. I always loved real estate. And I knew who Donald Trump was. I had no idea who he was. And I read the book and it blew my mind. It just completely changed the course of my life and changed my life all around. It, it Everything started to make sense. You know, your money working for you and, and working for different types of income and, and learning how the, the financial market works. And it just opened my world to, hey, why wasn't I taught this in school? And there were things I questioned in school a lot and questioned people at schools and professors and teachers and no one had answers. And I just got the same answer. Well, hey, it doesn't matter. Or, hey, you'll learn in school or you'll learn on the job. And I was like, well, what am I doing and then? You know, why? So, I mean, this guy really changed my life to, you know, and, and started me into personal development and, and Jim Rohn also, but he's more, he's not as much of a financial guy. He's more of a personal development guy, but Jim Rohn, but Robert Kiyosaki really changed my, the course of my life forever. And I can't, I, I've read all of his books. He probably has, has dang near 20 books 
and uh, or 15, 10, uh, 10 to 20 books of his own. But then he has 15 to 20 books with it, of his advisors that have books as well and have read all those. And his vocabulary is now stuck in my head. You know, like your, your assets pay for your liabilities, things like that. And I just, I can't get them out of my head now and I'll never, I can never revert back to the old way because I've read it so many times and my wife, Jessica, makes fun of me a ton because she's like, you read all of his books and you're reading that one again or you read, and you know, she hears stuff and she gets sick of, of hearing it. But it's, you know, he says at the end of every one of his podcasts, actually, the Rich Dad Radio Show, you know, repetition is how we learn, right? I mean, you, you're practicing. Whether you're a salesperson and you're calling people on the phone all day long or you're an athlete or whatever it is, you do music, well, you're practicing. You're doing your repetitions. You're getting it in and you're becoming, it's becoming a habit. And that's exactly what I did. And now I have that language that, that he uses. You know, I don't know all of it, but I have a lot of that language and his his mindset, I have a lot of that now because of, of this. And uh, it's, it really has, it's changed my life. So um, we're going to jump quick to uh, some futurists. So these two guys are futurists. Ray Kurzweil, this guy works for Google. He is, he has some amazing books. Um, Age of Intelligent Machines. Um, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't even think of them. But I've, I have a couple of his books in there. He writes one every few years, maybe every five, ten years, kind of going through the, the next decade or two or kind of predicting what will happen in the future. And he's very accurate. And the reason he's very accurate is because he's the one shaping a lot of the future. So he is one of the chief guy, I believe he's one of the chief you know, futurists um, over at Google. And he's the one working on you know, all these different projects you know, with, uh, you know, our cell phones will become, you know, chips in our skin and, and things like that. You know, obviously the driverless car, which is, you know, pays past that now, but it's, uh, he's, it's almost scary. Um, it's very scary listening to some of the stuff that, that he talks about, but, um, he, really quick, I put him in there though, just because of the, just knowledge. I mean, knowledge, he says the rate of knowledge is doubling every two years. You know, he said that that's just going to keep geometrically, it'll just keep progressing and it'll be down to every year, every six months, every month. And then what happens? I mean, really, what happens when knowledge is increasing that fast? I mean, that's just, it's incredible. I think about where we were, you know, 100 years ago, you know, or 200 years ago. So now it doubles, knowledge base doubles every two years. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, Martin Ford, this guy, his book's really good too, The Rise of Robots. He talks about um, just automation and what's going on in the world with, with robots and, and what we're going to see here in the future. Um, and some of this stuff, I'm getting a little bit, you know, it's not exactly all 2017. These guys are a little bit more like, hey, this is the next, you know, year to three or four years. These guys are out there a little bit more. I mean, this is this is some, you know, real, you know, crazy stuff. I mean, automation with with McDonald's, um, you know, that's, I mean, we got... Martin Ford here says that McDonald's is replacing 40% of their 1.8 million workforce with robots or automation. So, you know, people, and this is why you have to, again, you have to be so careful. You have to understand currency. And this is why I study it so much because it, it, I mean, it fascinates me, but it, even if it doesn't fascinate you, you still have to be versed in it. You still have to kind of, you know, know um, your way around it. And, you know, people that are, they want you know fifteen dollar an hour, you know, uh, work for working at McDonald's. It's it's not meant to be a career. You know, it's not a it's not a career to work at McDonald's. You know, and what's going to happen is guys like this, you know, or guys like all these who are most of them are all entrepreneurs. They say, okay, great. Well, this person now cost me you know healthcare, sick days. You know, maybe they don't produce like they should all the time, and now they want to be paid fifteen dollars an hour or whatever it may be. Well, guess what? They're going to get automated. They're going to just pay something up front, invest that in that money, the technology, and it's going to wipe everyone out. It's going to wipe that whole workforce out. I mean, so really, what happens? I mean, you already have in Arizona; it's already happening. You already have you know them doing kiosk with automation, making making hamburgers and ordering and things like that. So, I mean, where does it go from there? I mean, then what? You know, are we going to have laws that are saying you can't have automated, you know, so it's going to be very interesting times. So the things that we just have to think about and be prepared of, uh, be prepared for, but it's, you know, think about that 40%. And then think about 
one of the largest sectors of, of the workforce is truck drivers, you know, or dri just drivers in general. Sorry, it's just really just drivers. And what happens when there's automation? And there's just, you know, it's Uber, you know, in this uh, automated uh, cars, you know, and, and uh, driverless cars. What happens then? That whole sector of the workforce, what happens then? You know, so these are the things that, you know, again, our country has to really, you know, think about. And our country really has to um, take a hard look at because these things are coming. And it's, you know, some of them might be a little bit longer than others, but they're coming. And it's, it's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens in the future, how things like, you know, driverless cars, driverless trucks affect the workforce. Because that's a massive segment of the industry of, or of, of the, uh, the working population. And, and really in fast food, things like that. I mean, that's huge. I mean, you have automation, you have, you know, driverless cars and trucks. What happens to those people? And again, it's, these are things to think about. They're not things to scare people. Um, we had farmers. I just I can't remember the stat now, but we have farmers were the biggest, obviously, segment of the population or workforce. Um, you know, hundred years. I believe it was only hundred years ago, if not less, but definitely hundred, two hundred years ago. And you know, we had you know pretty much you know whatever 60, 50, 60, 70, 80 percent of the population, a, a large chunk of the population were farmers. Now it's down to like less than one percent, I believe. So it's, you can see that, hey, we've got past that, we've, we've progressed, we've got, we've got better with, with what we're doing and there other opportunities have arisen, but those are just things to think about and, and hopefully people can in start envisioning, hey, how can we change this? How can we you know, grow? So um, and doctors and lawyers, geez, this is another, this is a crazy one. Uh, accountants, doctors, lawyers, um, I'm sure you know real estate agents, um, whoever it is, people that have knowledge. I mean, they already have. They already have. I mean, get this: they already, if you need 20 million pages read, you just need to be super smart. Well, the robot can do that. They're going to read 20 million pages in I don't know what a, a, an hour, a half a day, or a week, and a person can never do that. A human being can never do that. So if you just need knowledge, and that's all you're looking for. Well, hey, we have a robot here for you. I mean, we have robots doing surgery already. So and I'm, they're going to be more precise than a surgeon. So what happens? You have now you have two ends of the spectrum. You've got this end of the spectrum. You've got this end of the spectrum. So what happens? What happens when you know those things come about? The rise of the robots. A really good book, Martin Ford. Um, it just makes you think. I mean, I think one of the coolest things is is just the thinking aspect of it. It's really getting someone to think about. Wow, like this is this is crazy. It gets you those creative juices going. I think, and you know, I. Just, it's not going to be me that's going to solve these problems. It's going to be hopefully one of you or, you know, somebody is going to see something that's going to spark something in them and, and, you know, some genius idea is going to come out of them. So that's what, that's what's cool. And I think that's what the whole point of this is. And this is where I wanted to, like I said, I wanted to get a lot more pointed and a lot more, a lot deeper into our insiders, uh,